what do you think of Elon Musk, Musk coming out against Build Back Better? Elon Musk. Sorry, we don't have I mean, he's going to do what he's going to do. Elon Musk said he hasn't taken any subsidies. Okay, so he got his, his so now, he got his, so now he's he's done with them, right? Yeah, of course. Hey. I mean, I mean, we're a billionaire is going to billionaire, right? And he, he just doesn't want, he, it's like subsidies for me, but not for thee. When he says that if... Uh, I'm really sorry. The, the union made the union made manufacturer shouldn't be now. getting we're extra money. Well, it doesn't surprise me. He wants a union bus in his factory. All right, guys. So that is AOC uh, responding to my favorite African American, Elon Musk. That's a joke, guys. It's a joke. Uh, in regards to his uh, comments about Biden's Build Back Better plan, right? The uh, two plus trillion dollar. Uh, social spending plan that the Democrats say is infrastructure, but is really not infrastructure, right? And it's not really two uh, trillion dollars is actually more, and we're gonna get into that. But uh, Elon Musk uh, hasn't really been a fan of the Biden administration, right? He's taking shots at Joe Biden, particularly when Joe Biden didn't acknowledge uh, some of Elon's achievements um, when it comes to uh, SpaceX sending people into space, things like that, right? Not really a fan of the Biden administration, and he kind of doubled down on that again at the wall street journals uh ceo council meeting in which he was asked about biden's build back better uh agenda and elon musk was not a fan of it in fact he says that the whole thing should be scrapped and we just shouldn't pass it and he also takes a shot at uh the whole idea of central planning in general uh in regards to how <laughs> the progressives think that it's better to tax billionaires Right, and let the government allocate our resources instead of letting the best capital allocators in the world uh, handle what they're actually good at. Take a look. Everyone is talking about the infrastructure plan and the bill. Say tomorrow you get a phone call from Joe Biden and he says... <laughs> I think that's unlikely, but sure. <laughs> okay. You know, he, he just gives you a call and he says, you know, I haven't been talking a lot about Tesla lately, but you know, what do you, what do you need from this bill? What are your needs? At least no, no one at Tesla has actually brought up whether they they care about this bill or not. I, I think if this bill happened or didn't happen, I, I, I don't know. We don't think about it at all, really. Okay. It, um, it might be better. Honestly, it might be better if the, if the bill doesn't pass. Because um, we've spent so much money, you know, it's like $3 trillion federal uh, expenditures are $7 trillion. Uh, federal revenue is $4 trillion. That's a $3 trillion uh, difference in uh, if this was a company, it'd be a $3 trillion loss. We, we don't need the $7,500 tax credit. Um, I would say, honestly, I would just can this whole bill. Don't pass it. That's my recommendation. What about the, the support, though, for the charging network? I mean, there are, there are parts of this bill. And, and... No, I mean, you know, do, do we need support for gas stations? Uh, we don't. So uh, there's, no, there's no need for, this, uh, for, for support for a charging network. I would delete it. Delete. <laughs> Okay. Um, something's got to give. You can't just spend uh, $3 trillion more than you earn uh, every year and expect, uh, you know, don't expect something bad to happen. I, I think, you know, this is not good. Um, well, wait, Mitch McConnell and, and, is actually and, and, saying... And in fact, if I may elaborate on that, the, 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 the deficit is more than $3 trillion when you look at uh, the uh, future obligations. It's, it's much more than that if you look at future obligations for Social Security, Medicare, and, and, and so forth. So we're running this incredible deficit. I, uh, someone's got to give. I, I, I don't know. Let's just can't keep going. All right, but oh, like, there's there's some other good things in this bill. That some would argue. I mean, the, a lot of money earmarked for R and D. Would would you want to put that towards something? No. Okay. All right. We get what uh, you're saying we on it. it. In in general, we we should just we, we if we don't cut government spending, I, something really bad's going to happen. This is crazy. Our, our our spending is so far in excess of revenue. It, it's insane. Like you could zero out all billionaires in the, in the country. This is almost like anti-billionaire BS. Uh, well, uh, if, if you zeroed out all the billionaires, you still wouldn't solve the deficit. It does not make sense to take uh, the, the job of capital allocation away from people who have demonstrated great skill in capital allocation and give it to uh, you know, an entity that has demonstrated very poor skill in, in capital allocation, which is the government. Uh, I mean, you can think of the government essentially uh, as a corporation in the limit. Uh, it, it is, it is a, the government is simply the biggest corporation with a monopoly on violence and with and where you have no recourse all right guys so that is elon musk uh making a better 
fiscally conservative argument, right, against government spending than I've heard basically any Republican make in Congress, maybe outside of Rand Paul, right? Uh, the guy simply just trashed <laughs> this journalist, right, this reporter who basically tried to get him to say anything that he could nice about Biden's Build Back Better agenda, right? <laughs> she tried so hard to get him to say one thing nice about it. But Elon wasn't having it because, you know, he, he's right about the whole government spending thing. We simply cannot afford to continue to spend as much money as we're spending, right? And the Democrats are basically playing a game in which they're not actually really talking about the real cost of this bill. They're trying to pretend like the bill is free. Oh, it won't cost anything, right? However, even the uh, woke academics at the University of Pennsylvania, right, uh, Wharton School, they actually did a budget model, an analysis of the uh, macroeconomic effects of the Build Back Better plan. <laughs> and here's what they found. Um, they estimated that H.R. 5376, the Build Back Better Act, as written, would increase uh, spending by $2.1 trillion over the 10-year budget window and revenue by $1.8 trillion for a 10-year deficit of $274 billion. All right, so in the grand scheme of things, right, when you're running a $3 trillion deficit, $274 billion don't sound all that bad, right? And that, that's how the Democrats are framing this, okay? And so, well, over 10 years, it's just $274 billion. But wait, let's, let's continue. They also found we project that HR 5376 would decrease GDP by 0.2% in 2050 relative to the current law baseline, even after accounting for positive growth effects of various spending programs. So basically, we're, we're looking at a decrease in GDP of 0.2% uh, in 2050, even accounting for all the positives from <laughs> the spending, okay? And here's the real kicker, right? Here's what they really don't want to talk about. In an alternative illustrative scenario in which all temporary provisions in HR 5376 are made permanent, spending would instead total $4.6 trillion over the 10-year budget window. In this scenario, by 2050, uh, federal deficit increased by 24.4% and GDP would fall by 2.9% relative to current law. So that's what the Democrats are not mentioning, right? That by 2050, the federal debt will increase by 24.4% as a result of this bill. And the GDP will fall by 2.9%. Okay, does that sound like a free bill to you, right? Because the Democrats, the way they've uh, framed the cost of this bill is that a lot of programs in this bill are temporary, right? And you know what happens, guys, when people get hooked off the government teat, okay? When they get hooked on the government teat, uh, they want to keep it, right? So imagine, right, maybe five, six years down the road where these programs expire and then they come up for a vote again. You think people are going to want to give up that child tax credit? <laughs> Probably not. They're not going to want to give that up, okay? They're going to want to keep getting it, right? And if you vote against it, aka if Republicans vote against it, uh, they're going to take a huge hit for it, right? That's why this agenda is so toxic. It's simply a Trojan horse for a lot of deficit spending and expanding the debt, right? That, that's what it is. So Elon is right about that. He's also right about the fact, in general, in regards to this whole concept that progressives push, where they think that the government can do a better job at allocating capital than uh, the private sector. And it's just not true, right? It's just not true. Okay, now, again, there's some things that I think that the government is probably better at than the private sector for some things, right? But that's for a very minimum amount of things, okay? For the most part, um, people like Elon Musk are way more skilled at allocating capital than the government. That is why NASA relies on Elon Musk's SpaceX to basically take us to the moon, conduct all their operations in regard to going into space, and to, uh, in the future, take us to Mars, right? That's why we don't really have the space shuttle program anymore. Because we realize that, hey, this capitalist over here, he's better than the government at this, right? It, it's really simple stuff. So, yeah, that's what I agree with Elon Musk on, right? And I think that he is spot on about that. But, you know, I do have some criticisms of Elon, uh, specifically when it comes to the whole subsidies thing, okay? Now... Here's the thing. I want to say that I believe that um, 
subsidies in general, right, uh, is really just corporate socialism, right? And we really don't talk about corporate socialism enough, right? And it is very rampant. It is probably, honestly, um, most of the socialism in this country, let's keep it 100, is corporate socialism, right? The government trying to pick winners and losers uh, in the private sector. That's That's just how it works. And Elon Musk has benefited from that as his company Tesla has taken billions of dollars in subsidies from the government, mainly in the name of a $7,500 uh, federal tax credit that people got for buying uh, electric cars that uh, was implemented uh, after the 2008 uh, recession. So he's benefited from that. Now, the Elon Musk's defense here, he's saying that he didn't anticipate getting those. And at the end of the day, as a businessman, I mean, what are you going to do, <laughs> right? You're going to not uh, benefit from the subsidy? No, of course you're going to benefit from it, right? <laughs> of course you are. Okay, but we got to keep in mind here. Elon is talking <laughs> from the perspective of a business man. Okay, that's what he's doing. So while I'm with him in regards to um, getting rid of the corporate socialism, <laughs> right, which is, uh, you know, a lot of these subsidies that the government gives out to basically pick winners and losers in the private sector, which, I mean, basically is the most rampant form of socialism that we have in this country that nobody seems to want to talk about, <laughs> right, because maybe people on the left and the right in regards to Republicans and Democrats both support it. But I'm just saying, he's talking as a businessman <laughs> because Biden's Build Back Better agenda, the subsidies for electric vehicles in that plan do not benefit him <laughs> all that much, <laughs> right? That's why he's not that interested in it because Biden's subsidies go to union-backed electric car makers, companies like General Motors, Ford, uh, Stellatus. That's what that money's going to, right? So he's not really benefiting from that. Okay, and that credit can be as high as twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Again, he's not getting that because his factories are not unionized. Okay, so the way Elon Musk is looking at this is like, okay, um, we haven't really seen a drop in demand since our tax credit ended, right? That benefited them, which was the seven thousand five hundred dollar one, right? Tesla is now, you know, kind of ahead of the curve. They're maturing as a company. They're starting to really ramp up, you know, market share, whatever, right? He's like, look. Uh, this build back better plan, uh, really is going to benefit my competitors. It's not really going to benefit me. So why should I be for it? <laughs> right? So again, I, I just want people to understand part of what Elon is saying, even though I agree with him in principle, I know why he's saying it. He's saying it because he's a businessman basically trying to, um, make it so his competition can't benefit from these subsidies that he's not necessarily going to benefit from because it's not like Elon is necessarily against, uh, <laughs> getting government help. Right. First, we saw, you know, the U.S. helped them out and also China helped them out. Right. As uh, Mr. G, right, Xi Jinping, president of China, uh, basically uh, allow Elon Musk to take advantage of the cheap manufacturing in China by opening up a factory in Shanghai uh, with cheap land, low interest loans, tax incentives, basically in return for building up local suppliers right, and boostering, lagging uh, Chinese electric vehicle players, basically saying, look, you can come over here and do business, okay, and you can manufacture cars here, but in exchange, you, you got to help us out, you know, you got to help out our locals, our domestic manufacturers, right, so that's, that's basically what's happening, and now it's at the point where Tesla is making about half of its vehicles in China, right, which means that uh, Tesla is heavily reliant on China, and now Tesla is facing a more increasingly difficult business environment uh, from China as domestic rivals uh, to Tesla in China are mad at the government saying, look, uh, you showing too much preferential treatment towards Tesla, right? You got to tighten it up, okay? And we all know that the long game for China is for their domestic producers and suppliers to win, right? Which is why uh, China is pressing foreign companies like Tesla to meet more stringent policy demands such as data security, right? Which, again, Tesla has to adhere to, okay? Things like that and cracking down on big tech, which, uh, again, Tesla's a part of big tech. Uh, stuff like that is starting to really affect Tesla in China because there are increased regulations, you know, <laughs> the things that he complains about in the U.S., right? More regulations are not good for business. He's facing the same thing in China to a certain extent. And even though I'm sure Elon is smart enough to know that that's what's happening, right, in China, uh, he's so in bed with China that he, he basically still has to kiss the ring, okay? Like, for example, when he tweeted 
back on uh, July 1st that, quote, the economic prosperity that China has achieved is truly amazing, especially in infrastructure. Again, this is Elon Musk basically kissing the ring, right, of Xi Jinping, uh, like we've seen so many other companies do, right? I mean, this is basically a historical pattern, okay? And uh, it is likely that Elon Musk is aware that in the long term, China's goal is not necessarily for Tesla to win, okay? We've seen this happen so much to other companies, right? For example, like Apple, when they bought their iPhone supply chain to China. Now, Apple trained up uh, a lot of Chinese companies that also became suppliers to Chinese smartphone manufacturers that now lead the world in sales, right? So this happened to Apple, okay? And it's also happening to Microsoft, specifically when it comes to, you know, cloud storage. And, you know, they recently shut down their local version of uh, LinkedIn uh, in uh, China, citing a challenging uh, operational environment, <laughs> okay? The same thing that Tesla is probably going to face in the long run. So my thing is this, I rock with Elon, right? And I agree with the things he says in principle about Biden's Build Back Better Bill, however, I don't really appreciate him being so close uh, with China and him doing so much business in China, right? And I understand as a CEO as uh, of a company, a, a worldwide company, really at this point, he's got to do what's best for the shareholders, right? And I appreciate it as an investor in Tesla. You know, I, I do appreciate it, but from a pro-America perspective, I really don't, okay? I really don't. Because ultimately, in the, the day, you know, China is about China, and China is one of our biggest foreign adversaries. So that being said, um, I, I think I'm a little uncomfortable with a guy who's going to be responsible for taking us to the space station, to the moon, maybe to Mars, uh, being so in bed with a foreign adversary like China. Okay, I think that's an uncomfortable relationship for me. So that's my biggest criticism of, of Elon is that hey, you know, I think you're a little bit too close with China. Okay. Because I'm America first. I'm America first, right? And I'm not necessarily sure <laughs> if that's where Elon's head is at. But I kind of understand as a CEO of a multinational company, you got to do what you got to do, right? For your shareholders. It, it is what it is. That's capitalism, right? But I mean, you know, just capitalism helped out by, you know, government uh, subsidies and stuff like that. But I'm just saying, right? He can't really say no, okay? If he wants to do what's best for his, his shareholders, that is. So, like I said, I, I do agree with him in principle in regards to the, the BBB, right, and the government spending and how uh, the government is not better at allocating capital than people like him or Jeff Bezos or the top billionaires in the world. They're billionaires for a reason, right? I mean, it is what it is. So, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.